Today we continue our study of the mathematics of finance by covering section 11.3 on credit cards and consumer loans. The basic idea with credit cards is that when a customer uses a credit card to make a purchase, the customer is actually receiving a loan. Typically there's an added cost to the consumer on credit in the form of an annual fee and or an interest charge or charges on purchases. A finance charge is an amount paid in excess of the cash price and is the cost to the customer for the use of credit. The most common method of determining finance charges is the average daily balance method. Interest charges are based on the credit card's average daily balance which is calculated by dividing the sum of the total amounts owed each day of the month by the number of days in the billing period. For example, if I ask you to calculate the finance charge for a credit card with a $117.19 average daily balance and a 1.95% monthly interest rate, all you would need to do to calculate that finance charge is multiply the given average daily balance of $117.19 times the monthly interest rate, which as a decimal is 0 0.0195. And that gives you, rounded to the nearest cent, a $2.29 finance charge. Finance charges are easy to calculate if you already know the average daily balance, as we just demonstrated. If you don't know the average daily balance though, you have to calculate it first and then use that result to calculate the finance charge. This is the formula for calculating the average daily balance, but I'm going to show you that we really don't need to use this formula explicitly if you're willing to use something you already know how to do. So I'm going to display the average daily balance formula, which is really the sum of the total amounts owed each day of the billing period divided by the number of days in the billing period but then give you the caveat that you really don't need that formula if you're willing to do it another way, which I'll show you shortly. Here's an example. A credit card account had a $246 balance on March the 5th. A purchase of $117 was made on March the 12th, and a payment of $200 was made on March the 28th. Find the average daily balance if the billing date is April the 5th, and round your answer to the nearest cent. Again, I'm displaying the formula for average daily balance, but honestly, if you're willing to use something we already learned earlier, you don't really need this formula, and I'm going to show you through this example what you can do instead. First of all, you need to build a table. The first column should have the dates. The second column should hold the changes in the balance on the credit card account. The third column should actually be the daily balance, and then the last column is the number of days. If you'll build this four column table and follow the steps I'm about to show you, the average daily balance follows. First of all, go back and read the problem and find the earliest date that something happened. And what you see is that March the 5th was the first date that anything happened, and that was the credit card balance was $246. So the daily balance on March the 5th was $246. That's your starting point. Now you move on. Look for the next date that anything happened. You'll find it was March the 12th. On March the 12th, there was a purchase of $117. So go down to the next line, put March the 12th, the change in balance was a purchase of $117, so that increases the balance on the credit card, so that's a positive $117, and if you take $117 and add it to the $246 that was already there, you end up with a new daily balance of $363. Now here, pay attention. Eventually, we want to find the number of days that each of those daily balances occurred. So if I look back, I started out at March the 5th, the next thing happened on March the 12th, so I've got to go back up and say that that first daily balance of $246 was continued all the way through March the 11th. It was only changed on March the 12th. So once you put in a new date, you can go back and put an ending date on the old date. So it started out being March the 12th, but it ended on March the 11th and changed from 246 to 363 on March the 12th. 
Now we need to count how many days that happened. If you just say 11 minus 5, you get 6. But if you look at the actual count, you're counting 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's actually 7 days. So remember, we talked about that earlier when we did consecutive numbers. If you subtract the biggest minus the largest, you have to add 1. But if you're in any doubt, just write them out and count them because you don't want to miss the number of days. It turns out to be 7. Now let's move to the next transaction. You'll notice that a payment of $200 was made on March the 28th. So the next line of the table should be March the 28th. There was a payment, so that decreases the credit card balance. So that's a minus $200. And if you take $200 away from the previous daily balance of $363, you end up with a $163 daily balance. And now that you have that in, you can go back up and see the ending date on the previous line. So if the payment was made on March the 28th, that means the previous daily balance of 363 ended the day before on March the 27th. And now you can count the number of days from March the 12th to March the 27th. As I said earlier, you can take 27 minus 12 and add 1, or you can just write them all out and count them but you have to get the number of days right or all your other work is for naught. So 27 minus 12 is 15 plus one is 16, or you can just write them out and count them. In any case, it's 16 days. And now you look and the only thing left is the billing date. The billing date, and this is important, the billing date is the first day of the new cycle. So that means that the old cycle ended the day before. So whenever you're given the billing date, you know you need to end the day before that. So that balance of $163 doesn't go all the way to April the 5th. It goes to the day before because the billing date is the first day of the new billing cycle. Then you've got to count. Be careful. You've got to know how many days each month has. March 28th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, that's March, then 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th. That's eight days total. However you do it, be careful because if you miscount the number of days, all your other work is going to be for nothing because your answer will be wrong. Now we just need to use the formula above for average daily balance and we're done. Remember the average daily balance is the sum of the total amounts owed each day of the billing period. In other words, you have to add up how much was owed each day and the chart is the key to that. If you look at the first line of that chart, $246 was owed for seven days. So that's 246 times seven. Seven days of owing $246. Sum means add. So that's plus. Now you go to the next line. For another 16 days, $363 was owed. So that's 363 times 16. That's another amount that needs to be added into your sum. And finally, looking at the last line of the table, you add in $8,163. You owed $163 for eight days. So that's 163 times eight. Now, of course, that's all in the numerator. You now divide by the number of days in the billing period. Well, if you look at the last column of the chart, 7 plus 16 plus 8 is 31. So there are 31 days in the billing period. So that's what you divide by. Now it's just an arithmetic problem. So you've got 246 times 7 plus 363 times 16 plus 163 times 8. If you do those three multiplications up top and then add them together, you get $8,834 divided by 31. And again, this is dollars and cents, so you get $284. And if you round it to the nearest cent, that's $284.97. So the average daily balance is $284.97. Simple enough. You have to be careful setting up the chart, otherwise it's a simple arithmetic problem. I could also ask you another question. For example, I could say, Suppose the interest on the average daily balance is 1.5% per month. What is, going, what is the finance charge going to be? Well, once you have the average daily balance, all you have to do is take the average daily balance 
and multiply it by 1.5%. But remember, you've got to change the 1.5% to a decimal. So you move the decimal place two places to the left, and that becomes 0 0.015. And if you multiply 284.97 times 0 0.018, excuse me, 0 0.015, you get $4.27. So for that month, if the interest on the average daily balance is 1.5% per month, you would owe $4.27 in finance charges for that one, one month. Now let's discuss something called the annual percentage rate. The true annual interest rate, for short, is called APR sometimes, or annual percentage yield, APY, is simply the effective annual interest rate on which credit card payments are based. The idea behind the APR is that interest is owed only on the unpaid balance of the loan. We can use the following formula to estimate the annual percentage rate, or APR, on a simple interest rate installment loan, and that formula says that the APR is the quantity 2NR divided by the quantity N plus 1, where N is the number of payments and R is a simple interest rate. For example, you purchase a refrigerator for $675, pay 20% down, and agree to repay the balance in 12 equal monthly payments. The finance charge on the balance is 9% simple interest. Find the finance charge. So you have to read through the problem carefully. The first thing you want to do is find the amount of the down payment because you pay 20% down, that's not even borrowed, so that has to go away. So the down payment is 20%. 20% is 0.20. 0.20 times $675 is $135. So you paid $135 down right up front. That's not part of the money you're borrowing. So you have to take this $135 away from the $675. That leaves you with a total of $540 that you want to finance. So that's the first thing. So the finance charge is 9% simple interest. So 9% of $540 is $48.60. Remember, you're doing it in 12 equal monthly payments, so you're doing it for a year, so that's an annual interest rate. This type problem is very straightforward. You just have to read through and find out what you need to do and do it a step at a time, but none of the calculations are difficult. Now let's estimate the annual percentage rate and then round to the nearest tenth of a percent. The annual percentage rate estimate formula is that estimated annual percentage rate formula for simple interest loan, APR equals quantity 2NR over quantity N plus 1 is what you need where N is the number of payments and R is a simple interest rate. Well, the number of payments was 12 and the interest rate as a decimal is 0 0.09. Plugging those numbers in and multiplying up top you get 2.16, down bottom you get 12 plus 1 is 13 because you're doing it annually. 12 monthly payments, and if you do that division, you get about 0.16615. Now take several decimal places here because you've got to change it to percent and then round it. Changing to a percent requires you to move the decimal place two places to the right. Now you're ready to round. If you don't take several decimal places, your rounding may be wrong. So I've, I've gotten 16.615%. I'm going to round it back to the tenth place so that six stays because the next digit is a one. So to the nearest tenth of a percent, the estimated annual percentage rate is 16.6%.